we've all been there where we've seen charts posted on social media where it has weird lines it has lines everywhere you've got lots of different colors etc and an already confusing chart is made even more confusing with these lines i'm going to be showing you what bollinger bands are and this is more of a continuation from my previous video so if you haven't watched my previous video on moving averages then i recommend watching that first before watching this video so what exactly are bollinger bands bollinger bands were created in 1980s by john bollinger it consists of three lines you've got the moving average and then you've got a line above and a line below which represents the standard deviation from the moving average So what exactly is a standard deviation? If we had a classroom of over 30 students and we were to plot their height onto a chart, it would look something like this where the, the shortest children would be at the start in terms of height and then most people would be around an average height and then you'd get a very few tall people. And this is how the chart would look like. Somewhere in the middle of that, you'll have your average. So let's say this average is 150 centimeters. So out of the 30 students in the class, the average height was 150 centimeters. One standard deviation around the mean would be like this, on either side of the mean. So for example, if your standard deviation was 30, then the range would be 120 centimeters to 180 centimeters. And the rest of the people would be excluded from this because they're too far apart from the mean. This is what the standard deviation is. It gives you an idea of what majority of the people are in terms of the data point and it excludes the extremes so the people that are too tall and the people are too short and applying this to the bollinger bands it consists of three lines you've got the moving average and then you've got a line above and a line below which represents the standard deviation from the moving average So how do we actually access the bollinger bands on trading view we click on indicators and we search for bollinger bands and it's this one over here. So if you click on that, you will get something looking like this. These lines look, they look very confusing. So let's change this. As I mentioned earlier, blue line represents the moving average, but this is the 20 SMA it says over here. So I recommend changing that because 20 SMA is more for shorter term traders. But if you're a longer term trader like myself, I'd use a minimum of a 50 SMA. So let's change that over to 50. There we go. And you can see instantly it looks much more cleaner now. So you've got the 20 moving average and above it you've got the standard two times the standard deviation and below you've got the two times standard deviation. If you wanted to change that you can change it here but I recommend keeping that the same way exactly as it is. The first thing to note with the Bollinger Bands is there'll be areas where the Bollinger Bands are quite wide such as this one over here and there'll be some areas where the Bollinger Bands are a bit more narrow and here is an example of that. This generally represents volatility. As you can see here, the, because it's quite narrow, there's very less volatility but because here it's quite wide, there's been some wild price movements over here as you can see. The second thing is how do you actually use the Bollinger Bands? Some people they use the top part of the Bollinger Band as resistance and some people they use the bottom as support. It's a good approach and it works as you can see on the S&P right now, it's worked quite a few times. So if you've been buying all of these supports, it has eventually hit resistance and it has been profitable if you have done that. But what I normally recommend is look at when things fall out of the Bollinger Bands. So if you zoom in closer over here, you could see this area here. It went outside of the Bollinger Bands. This usually means it's severely undervalued. And if you had bought here, you would have made a quick 8% and so on. Yes, the overall trend was down. That's why using the Bollinger Band on its own is not the best thing. However, if you use this in combination with other indicators, support and resistance, then it is a really good way forward. And likewise, when it goes outside the Bollinger Band, it's, it's also a signal that it's quite overbought in this area as well. Let's talk about the disadvantages of the Bollinger Band. So with the Bollinger Band, just like the moving average, because it actually uses the moving average, this is also going to be a lagging indicator. 
price movement might have already changed by the time the Bollinger Band signals anything. The second thing is it depends on the actual SMA that you use as well. So in this example, I've used a 50 SMA, but sometimes if you use a 20 SMA, then you get lots of false signals because you've seen how messy it looked when I was using the 20 SMA. It's a bit more messy using it that way. So it depends what you actually use. I normally recommend a minimum of 50, but it's about looking at what you're actually trading and identifying which moving average works best. The other thing is the Bollinger Bands on its own is not a great indicator and this area is a perfect example so if you had bought here and here you would have made a loss in the longer term yes it would have been profitable but in a downtrend it wouldn't have worked for you so using the Bollinger Bands on its own is not the best strategy however pairing the Bollinger Band with other indicators such as the RSI and also support resistance everything we've learned so far it would be a really good strategy it's a really good indicator to use if you found this video useful please like and subscribe I really appreciate watching 